gather together, we eat some lunch, and then we learn about something. So, so welcome to Lark's Nanas. I'm glad you guys are here. Today, we're going to be learning about sushi. And um, so the history of sushi um, dates back to, gosh, many, 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 many moons ago. Um, and basically, it was to preserve fish. Um, so this dates back to the Tang Dynasty in China. They would take fish and they would put it into salted rice and the lacto-fermentation would preserve the fish and they would discard the rice and then eat the fish. So that's basically the origins of it. And then the uh, Japanese adopted this concept and um, during the Edo period between 1600 and 1800, um, fish was then served with the rice. And what the Japanese did is they would add vinegar to the rice and that would speed up the fermentation process. And uh, eventually they got rid of kind of that fermentation, just vinegar the rice, and then began serving the rice and the fish together. So sushi, pretty much just means sour tasting. A lot of people think sushi means raw fish. It just means sour tasting. Um, so that's just kind of a quick um, background, very quick background of where sushi came from. And um, so basically the common ingredient in all sushi is vinegared rice. And we're gonna talk about um, what that means in a second. So there's several different types of sushi, and this is just a few. Um, there's nigiri, and so this is vinegared rice that's topped with sea, seafood of some sort or something. Um, so you've seen them, they're kind of oval shaped. I'll show you a picture of them in a second. And the seafood is sitting on the top. Then there's, um, let's, actually let's just go through, let's see if we can find those. There we go. So that is nigiri. That's very common. You guys have seen that. And then gunkan is a small cup of sushi rice. So it's got seaweed wrapped around it. Um, here is some with masago. Well, I just saw it a second ago. There we go. So you've seen those and that's got masago, which is just fish eggs that are nestled in there on top of the rice, but it could be pretty much anything. Um, Maki is what you guys enjoy today. Those are just your typical sushi rolls. Um, that's maki there. Um, there's a picture of it. Just very, um, that's it before it's been cut. Um, and so basically that's your layer of seaweed and then it's got rice over the top, filled with your fillings and then rolled. And that's what I'm gonna show you guys how to do today. Um, the uramaki is the same thing, but it's the rice on the outside. You've seen those done with the rice on the outside. And then a hand roll or tamaki is uh, just a, it's basically a roll made with the nori on the outside, rice inside, fillings, and it's wrapped in kind of a cone shape, and it's just one serving. So, and you would eat it pretty quickly because the, the nori can get soft um, if it sits too long. And so what is nori? Um, nori are sheets of seaweed, thin sheets of seaweed that's uh, been dried and then typically roasted. You can find them in Tesco. They've got a nice Asian section where you can find most of the ingredients that we're using today. Um, let me get this open here so you can take a look at it. So here it is, very thin. You can also buy these in little squares and they've been further toasted and salted and they're real crispy and you can eat those. Have you guys had those before? Yeah, I love those. Um, so that's nori and that is gonna be the outside of your sushi. Now there's two sides, there's a coarse side and then there's a shiny side and you always roll your sushi with the shiny side down. Um, Another ingredient in, in sushi is your rice. And so this is a short grain rice. If you were part of the takeaway homemade class on rice, 
than where we made risotto. This is very similar in, um, in structure to the risotto rice that we used. It is a short grain rice. It's a very sticky rice. Um, and then you're also gonna have rice vinegar. We have a ginormous jug. Would you show them the jug? You can buy little bottles of it in Tesco, but if you're gonna be making a lot of sushi, or we use it in coleslaw, we also use it on Amazon. Yeah, on Amazon. It's much, much more affordable to buy it in a big jug than it is. It's like a fifth of the price. Yeah, so it's much cheaper to buy a big jug if you use it pretty often. Caster sugar and salt are also used, um, and we add sugar and salt to the rice vinegar um, to kind of make it uh, more flavorful. We'll go through that when we do the, the instructions. Um, and then goo are your fillings. So whatever you want to put inside or outside of your sushi. Typically it's served with um, soy sauce, wasabi, oftentimes it'll be um, served with pickled um, ginger, which is just a palate cleanser. Um, but we don't typically eat a lot of, I just don't really like it that much. So, but if you like it, have at it. Um, so real quick, let's go through how to make, um, how to make some sushi. So what I have up here on my workstation is my cooked rice. So the first step to preparing your rice is you want to wash it. So you want to put your rice in a colander. And what we're doing is we're washing off some of the starch. And so you wash your rice in running water until the water runs clear. It usually takes three or four minutes and you're just going to move the rice around and, uh, and just and wash it. Then you put your rice in a pot and you're going to cover it. Um, I, I measure with my finger, but you can follow the instructions on the packet. Um, I usually cover it uh, by about three centimeters. So, but again, follow, follow the instructions and then uh, boil it for 10 minutes, turn the heat, well, bring it up to a boil, turn it down to a simmer for 10 minutes covered and then take it off the heat for 20 minutes. And that typically comes out perfect every time. Now, once your rice is cooked, you're going to take it out of the vessel that you've cooked it in and put it in a shallow pan. And th at that point, you'll add your seasoned vinegar to it. The rice is hot. It's going to absorb some of that vinegar. And you're going to move that rice around and you want to fan it with a fan or with a, a piece of cardboard or something, a cutting board to cool that rice down as quickly as possible. So that's the preparation for your rice. And that's what I have here. So it's just cooled and it's very, 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 very sticky. Very sticky. Okay. And once your rice is cooled, um, and while you're letting it cool, you can cut up whatever ingredients you want to put in your sushi. I have a bowl of water up here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a very standard California roll. Now, California rolls can be made with avocado or with soft cheese, either way. The avocados here are really not very good, in my opinion. Um, they taste very green, and so it's often hard to find them that are just the right like, ripeness. And avocados are so weird, like they'll be not ripe, not ripe, not ripe, and then like 13 seconds later, they're too ripe. You know what I mean? So and that's just what I've found. So I choose, um, I like to use the soft cheese. I think the texture is really nice. I like the flavor of it. You do what you want to do. It's totally up to you. So what you're going to do first is you're going to set your sushi mat. I like to put um, just a piece of kitchen towel down. It gives a little bit of um, kind of sturdiness to the, the mat. This is, the, this is just a bamboo mat. You can get these on Amazon. Um, you can get them in any Asian store. You can also find them um, occasionally at Tesco. So, and it's just bamboo that's held together by strings. So you put that down so that the bamboo runs horizontally. You're going to set your 
sheet of nori on top of that. Then the ingredients I have are soft cheese, cucumber, and these um, crab sticks. And I split them in half, but you can use whole if you want to. It's just a lot of crab in there if you use whole, but you can do that if you want. I'm gonna dip my fingers in this cold water and I'm gonna grab some rice. I'm gonna dip my fingers again. And basically you're just gonna, without mashing the rice too much, you're gonna spread that rice over your nori. So you're gonna do just a little over half of your nori covered with rice. And the water just keeps the rice from sticking all over your hands. There you go. The rice to ingredients ratio, um, I don't like a lot of rice on mine. If you like more rice, add more rice. Um, but don't, I wouldn't go any further up the nori than what I've done here. So now, I'm going to use this knife and I'm going to just spread a little. Now I am, you know, sushi, the guys that you see, men and women who actually are sushi masters at the restaurants have trained for years and years and years and are very, very good at what they do. And I am by no means um, trained in that way. However, Sushi is really, really easy to make at home, and it's really cheap. Once you have the ingredients, it's very, very inexpensive to make your own sushi. So I've just laid my cucumber over the top of that soft cheese, and I'm just gonna lay my crab there. So I have my ingredients. Um, you would put your ingredients in about the middle of your rice. Now, here's the tricky part. You wanna make sure that your nori is at the edge of your mat. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold that nori gently with your fingers, put your other fingers over the ingredients, and you're gonna wrap the nori and the mat over, um, over itself. And then you're gonna put your hand on this end of the mat, tuck your fingers and kind of give it a tug. And then you're gonna lift just the mat and then you're gonna roll forward. And that's all there is to it. Right? So I'm going to do one more just so that you can see how easy this is and you can do this at home. Okay? So dip my hands in the water. Put your rice down. Have any of you guys tried making sushi at home? Anybody tried it? No? When, um, when Steve and I lived in the States, our, um, the church that we attended would have this really awesome um, missions night and they would have different Sunday school groups and things take on a country or a couple of countries or areas and they would do the foods of those areas. And Steve and I were always tasked with um, Japan and we would always do enormous trays of sushi and it was just so much fun to taste and everybody worked really hard to make sure that it was you know as authentic as we could get and it was just so much fun. We might ought to try and do something like that here. I think that would be cool. Okay so I've got my ingredients, my rice, everything ready. Again you lift with your thumbs, hold that edge you're going to wrap that over, give it a tug, and pull forward. There you go. So, pretty simple. Um, pretty simple. Anybody can do it. Now, at this point, what I like to do is just let them sit for a couple of minutes, and it softens that nori just a little bit. But what you want to do is um, you want to take a serrated knife when you go to cut it. Can you see me okay? Yeah. And I like to just do um, kind of back and forth sweeping. Now, if you have a really sharp, unserrated knife, that works. That works well too. And I like to cut it in half, and then um, begin cutting my pieces. There we go. 
Okay, and you just want to be um, long strokes so that you don't want to tear your nori. And then when you get to the end, just like those little rabbit ears sticking out. I think that's really kind of cool. So, so that's that. Um, does anybody have any questions about rolling sushi? <laughs> I told you this was going to be a good demonstration. Any questions? No? So um, sushi is a, a finger food. You don't typically eat sushi with chopsticks. You eat it with your fingers. And um, it's it, you can keep it. Um, we have kept it overnight in the fridge. It's typically um, great the next day. We don't keep it any longer than that. Um, if you're going to do that, bring it out um, at least half an hour before you eat it so that it kind of comes to room temperature a little bit and the rice warms up just a touch. And um, and that's it. Easy peasy. All right. Thank you all. Thanks. Okay. Well, um, now I think we ought to cut the cake and, um, and continue with Faith's lovely birthday. And I'll put this sushi out there if anybody wants it. And thanks, you guys, for coming. Oh, before I go, you know what? Let me tell you about, just real quick. So next week is our Takeaway Homemade Kids. We're going to be making pasta. So if you haven't registered for that, make sure that you have. I know that you guys have. Um, and then the one after that is on beans and lentils. That's the 3rd of December. And then on the 10th, we're going to have... Um, a holiday entertaining hacks takeaway homemade. So we're gonna be talking about hors d'oeuvres and decorating and things like that. It's gonna be really fun. The 17th, we're gonna have a lunch and learn holiday party that's from noon to 1.30. The takeaway homemade classes are from 10 a.m. to noon. If you want to take part in the takeaway homemade classes, you need to register if you want to be hands-on. So we have some hands-on opportunities and then some spectator opportunities. Also, every Thursday, we are open from 12 until 6. We have all-day soup. Um, we have coffee and tea. We have um, technical help. Danny is here um, assisting folks with some of their technical, uh, their phone and tablets and things like that. And then from 4.30 to 5.30, we serve dinner. Um, the menu is on the wall back there. We also have some flyers with the menu that's there. Next week, we've asked people to register. Next week, we're doing a Thanksgiving dinner, like the full-out American Thanksgiving with dressing and turkey and the whole nine yards. We've asked people to register on Eventbrite because we want to make sure that we have enough room to seat everybody. So, but other than that, that's the only one we need you to register for, for the Common Ground. We do have a Christmas concert coming up the 5th of the December at 7.30. It's Keltish, they're awesome. You can register online. Um, it's just gonna be a donation uh, that night, so please feel free to come to that. We also are serving a Christmas dinner on the 25th of December. So in lieu of our service, we're gonna have some worship and then we're gonna have just a Christmas buffet. So Christmas Day, 25th. Also, please register on Eventbrite if you plan to come to that. What time is that? Oh, I'm sorry, it starts at 11. Did I not say that? Yes, it starts at 11. One more thing, and I'm only gonna throw this out there because I am um, co-pastor of this church along with my other co-pastor, Pastor Steve. You guys are always welcome to join us on Sunday. Our doors open at quarter after 10, and we eat together. We usually have um, some sweets and some other, all kind. who knows? It's, it varies from week to week, but it's always interesting. It's always delicious. Um, so y'all are welcome to join us. Worship starts at 11, but for the first 45 minutes or so, we just hang out and we eat and we fellowship. We have coffee and tea. So please join us on Sundays. You're always, always welcome. Um, okay, and with that, any questions before I step down? All right, let's have some cake. Ooh.